Don in London, good morning. It's April 9th, it's my brother's birthday, so happy birthday to Bill. I'm not going to sing. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. Uh, my addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour could be equally addictive around people, places and things. So, alcoholic in recovery, also knowing that my behaviour, whilst under the influence, went to extremes of wanting to be included, to be a part of life. And I thought the best way of doing that, using my thinking, was to be whatever I thought you wanted me to be. And I would keep on persisting. I was a very persistent and trying individual. But, you know, if we rely on external factors to keep us in a place of balance, or a feeling that we are balanced and appreciated, we are dependent on those external factors. So, alcohol, people, places and things. Drinking with the right people, in the right place, with the right things. And from dependency to addiction is not a far, a far step. It's a very short step into the addiction where we cannot stop self-harming with alcohol or going to extremes of bending ourselves like a pretzel as is often said in the fellowship I'll talk about that in a moment <coughs> and distorting my outlook to try and fit in so these days I don't try and do that I realize I have uh, the life experience and the situation as it is today and around the situation as it is today I have freedom of choice to be included or not to be a part of or not bearing in mind what is good for me and I only find out what is good for me on a daily basis so although I've got a history with lots of skills and attributes and personality traits that is good it helps me understand what is possible and what is not possible so on the not possible list and preference these days is not to drink not to go to extremes to be included but just be me and see if that's good enough and learn a bit about, about people and how I am with them relating so yes in recovery what made it possible family including my brother who is uh, of an age now over 50 like me and it's his birthday and he helped me in my recovery program as well so family friends community you name it professionals kept me alive long enough to see I needed help and I couldn't see the need for help because I was in a place where I'd learned that self-will willpower and always standing on my own two feet was the absolute pinnacle of success so these days I find it's a bit better actually to be a part of life to play my part not, not to be an actor, but just to be able to be included where it, it's appropriate and I feel comfortable and I can make choices. That's a gift given to me by being in fellowship and that fellowship is Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't speak for AA because like me, everybody in AA is unique and authentic with one similarity, a desire to be sober and share a message of experience, strength and hope as best we can. <clears throat> and that doesn't mean it's easy, it means it takes time to find ourselves and to find out what life can be by just being an ordinary sized, right sized human being equal to living like everybody else. So it's about getting back to balance I guess where life can work reasonably well without the extremes but of course there will be extremes as well where we're extremely happy or extremely sad and it's in those times of uh, extremes that the fellowship program comes to the fore because we learn from others how to stay sober and it's important to me to say I don't speak for AA because I never can never will AA doesn't have any spokespersons simply because we are all unique and authentic and we only have this one similarity so I'm not speaking for AA I'm speaking for myself and AA is a, a big part of my story so I share how it helps how else will I get a message across that uh, there is a way forward and I also have to say that AA is not the only way but uh, the one which works and gives me most freedom right now is the fellowship and that's why I share about it so what is AA on this little card here 
is the AA preamble shared at every meeting that I go to and inside it has the toolkit if you like for the uh, individual and the fellowship so on one side it's got the 12 steps here and on this side it has the 12 traditions so the 12 steps is a toolkit of uh, how to live and be a part of not to take over our lives but to make life possible and to make choices possible and the traditions hold the fellowship together so the steps are about open honest and willing to change and the traditions are about uh, unity service and recovery and that's how it works so there we go do I need to say more well what helps me I'm going to share from these books as Bill sees it co-founder data reflection in there uh, data reflections book itself under AA1 maybe from the 24 hour day book which is not an AA1 and I've been reading from this book as well the 12 steps and 12 traditions and I'll cover more of the 12 steps and 12 traditions in a separate video I'm going to do one on each step in each tradition but I haven't done them yet as a individual piece they're all in my videos but they're not necessarily that obvious so starting with the AA preamble and then some readings Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help, other alcohol, help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions AA is not allied with any sect denomination, politics, organisation or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy neither endorses nor opposes any causes our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety and when I read that and it says AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution people are though so we try and put those things to one side but we will share about our affiliations and where it says does not wish to engage in any controversy neither endorses nor opposes any causes the fellowship doesn't support anything like that but every single individual within the fellowship probably does so again we put aside our differences and look to this one similarity which is a desire to be sober and share the message with other people so in principle no AA can tell another AA person what to do but we can listen to their experience, strength and hope and maybe learn something from them either about what is good for us or what, will, what is not appropriate for us so we start to have a design for living living an open, honest and willing program of engaging in life as we are as unique, authentic individuals and that's how it works freedom of choice after all AA is a big ask for anybody who's drink drinking because drink may have kept us alive long enough to actually get to AA without jumping in a river which is something I contemplated along the way so I'm very lucky so daily, re daily reflections for today this is where I normally start and uh, one page a day this month April is all about step four which is about doing a, a self appraisal or fearless moral inventory and the purpose of that is to find our assets and liabilities so the whole month is really about step 4 April 12 steps 12 months 4th month 4th step and it says here freedom from king alcohol for April 9th let us not suppose even for an instance that we are not under constraint our former, former tyrant king alcohol always stands ready to again ready again to clutch us to him therefore freedom from alcohol is the great must that has to be achieved else we go mad or die we go mad back into the insanity of drink and likely die because of it certainly our freedoms die when we start back in the addiction when drinking I lived in spiritual emotional and sometimes physical confinement I had constructed my prison with, with bars of self-will and self-indulgence so in other words willpower kept me imprisoned because I was always fighting king alcohol in the end I couldn't fight it, I couldn't win and it kept me down 
Occasional dry spells that seemed to promise freedom would turn out to be little more than hopes of a reprieve. True escape required a willingness to follow whatever right actions were needed to turn the lock. With that willingness, willingness and action, it's all about willingness and action, it's not about sitting back theorizing and contemplating, it's about willingness and action, as is any spiritual program. Both the lock and the bars themselves opened for me. Continued willingness and action keep me free, in a kind of extended daily probation that will never end. And sometimes people think, well, what is probation? It's to prove ourselves that we're worthy. And actually, the most important thing to remember when we're sober is that we are worthy of life. We don't have to fear being on probation. Probation is a good place to be. It means that we're open to change, changing our attitudes and behaviour. But if we think and sit in, uh, in a theoretical way, that I want to talk about existential met metaphysical ontologies, as I put on my Facebook recently, or do we just believe in something which is bigger than us? The answer is, it's better to believe there is something bigger than us with more wisdom. And I found that that happened to be mankind as a great big blob, or blob of people. We all have wisdom, and combined wisdom, included wisdom, is the way it works, because we get wisdom from other people about what works and what doesn't work, or what we can do and what we can't do. And we have to test it out for re real around living our lives. But the one thing we don't have to test is whether we want some more drink inside us. So in fellowship, which is uh, where love, how, how we learn to love un un unconditionally in a very straightforward manner, love, be loved back and useful, it all starts to work. So we don't have to resort to drinking to be happy, and we don't have to resort to drinking to be sad or overcome extremes of situations. And in this book, as Bill sees it, continuing on the theme of step four, or learning about what are, what are the things which can trip us up, often called defects of character. And defects tend to be things working at extremes, or not working at all. So, when defects are less than deadly, practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destru destructive handicaps, namely alcohol in my case, in, in the end. No one wants to be so proud that he is, he is scorned as a braggart, nor so greedy that he is labelled labeled a thief. No one wants to be angry enough to murder, lustful enough to rape, gluttonous enough to ruin, the, ruin his health. No one wants to be agonised by chronic envy or paralysed by sloth or laziness. <coughs> of course, most human beings don't suffer these defects at, at these rock-bottom levels, and we who have escaped such extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves. Yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest that mo has enabled most of us to escape? Not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses, which will bring us punishment anyway. But when we face up to the less violent aspects of these set very same defects, where do we stand then? And so when defects are less than deadly, in other words, uh, it's like having uh, a chocolate binge or some sort of, I don't know, behavioural thing where we go mad on exercise or go mad on food or we go mad on a relationship. And I mean mad in the sense of extremes and con continuous indulgence which is not good for us or not good for the uh, probably anybody who is involved at the time because it's trying to make things perfect and of course the real answer to life is having the humility to keep on learning and humility may seem a, a bit of a strange word because it suggests that we're less than something well the only thing we're less than when we have humility is not knowing and not knowing is the greatest asset for a human being because it means we've got gap and room to grow. So if we don't know something we can learn about it and that is humility and we keep making mistakes because mistakes is where the learning tends to be around what we can and cannot do. So lo as long as we're not at extremes of rock bottom or ext extremes of euphoria then somewhere in the middle are mistakes our learning mistakes because we do it with humility and as long as we don't then try and cover them up 
and say I'm learning about this I'm actually learning how to live life live and understand my feelings live and understand what is it's like to be in reality right now live and understand that when it does go to extremes all I have to do is ask for help rather than try and cover up and muddle through we don't have that burning shame and guilt about anything that's the greatest gift so one of the best assets is if we don't know something and somebody asks us about that saying well I really don't know but I can find out or if I can't find out I'll find somebody who does know and it's really easy because we have enough confidence to say we just don't know and that's great because it means we're off the hook we're not the fountain of all knowledge we don't have to be right all the time we keep on learning about what is good now it's very hard sometimes because we do want to be a part of this book 24 hours a day not uh, AA authorized because some of the language does actually suggest that the person is put back in charge of their lives in an unhelpful way same as cognitive behavioral therapy if it's misunderstood around how we feel about life and then puts us back in the driving seat rather than actually say the driving seat is actually the same as anybody else it could be anybody driving the bus right now and it doesn't have to be me <coughs> excuse me it means we're not the fountain of all knowledge and God help us if it were because the world would turn out like we think it ought to turn out and it wouldn't be much fun would it we would be prisoners of our own our own well only what we know and the greatest gift I know is I get to know more about life from other people so for April 9th in Thought for the Day or 24 hour day book published by Hazelden third alcoholics recover their proper relationship with other people they think less about themselves and more about others they try to help other alcoholics they make new friends so that they are no longer lonely they try to live a life of service instead of selfishness all their relationships with other people are improved they solve their personality problems by recovering their personal integrity their faith in a higher power and the way, their way of fellowship and service to others is my drink problem solved as long as my personality problem is solved well that's very simplified and it says they solve their personality this uh, oh, more than one person by recovering their uh, personal integrity their faith in a high power and they their way of fellowship and service to others and actually it's it's a, a subtle difference which makes all the difference in these readings and when it says is my drink problem solved as long as my personality problem is solved well it's not about solving it it's about living life so it's not about a so solution and done with and I don't ever have to do it again the solution is to keep on being open honest and willing and living life so in, sometimes when we try to reshape ideas and thoughts and feelings it's to put our own influence onto the words and I do that all the time I hope I do it hope, help, helpfully but sometimes it may be exactly the opposite of what a person needs which is why it is always the many voices in the fellowship why meetings are so important is to get the broad perspective about life so if this is one man one voice uh, what we need is many voices and many people men and women to influence us in what's going on in our lives from family, community, society and fellowship we need all the input and we don't need it to be all about one thing so if we take care of sober the rest of life can happen and that's what it's about life happening and we're part of it so we put sober first at all costs sober first so that we can love, be loved back continually find out what the truth is and not just our personal opinion about the truth and wisdom from other people so truth love and wisdom tend to be my higher power and I can call that God but I cannot define God because God is bigger than everything nature providence the universe I cannot define any of those things nature providence the universe nor that which created it not me anyway
So, on a daily basis, get, getting back to uh, harsh or hard or even wonderful reality, even when it's difficult and horrible, reality is the best place to be without those filters in the way, except one. We do need denial sometimes when we get nasty shocks. So I'll talk about that another day, but uh, denial has its place of helping us through the most harsh or the most wonderful times. It's the I can't believe it's happening to me moments. So, what brings me back down to earth when I'm not quite sure, or just quite sure, but I still need to check it out, is that serenity prayer to God or good conscience. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is always in the moment and just for today. Don in London, April 9th, 2010. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol. So a recovering alcoholic, one day at a time. And behaviour as well. Work, relationships, people, places, things, you name it. I could be addicted, obsessed, needing more. No, not needing, wanting, always wanting. To be okay with the world and I guess striving to be perfect so that you would like me or love me or want me to be included in your life or for me to be included in your life whichever way around there was a need beyond I suppose what was in balance and an uncertainty about how to live life so what do we do when we're not sure about our insides? We look to the external world to try fixes, or some of us do, and as we try fix those feelings, or wonder what they are, because sometimes we have no idea what our feelings are, because we can't put a name to them, and we can't actually understand quite what is going on, because we've never learned. And for me, drink was an obvious way to fix the feelings inside to get some conviviality, to get to feel beyond fear. And I guess most of the time, if fear is in the right proportion to all the other feelings we have, relating to the experience we're living in, all is well. But unfortunately, some of us do find fear is not only imagined, but then becomes real as well. So what do we do? We try and fix it some more by being working harder, striving to be perfect and of course we are never perfect so addiction 35 years it took me to be a 24 7 drinker self-obsessed self-will run riot and there's nothing wrong with the right amount of willpower but when it's become overused and we're hanging on trying to control everything because nothing seems to work then we are susceptible to addiction so for me these days I had a moment of clarity after 35 years, well maybe had some along the way as well, drinking wasn't working for me, it wasn't resolving the issue of my feelings and my connection to reality, in fact it was taking me further and further away. So the only reality I had was the imagined one, or the imagination of what was going on in my head, distorted and at extremes of fear and every other feeling I guess. So these days, uh, with the help of other people, I'm in recovery one day at a time. So family, friends, community, professionals all played a part in keeping me alive long enough to get a moment of clarity. And much more than that, to be alive today. And a fellowship has taught me every single day in recovery how to keep well and try and find balance as life goes along. And that fellowship is AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't speak for it, never can, never will, never want to. It simply is a place where I find experience, strength and hope to be sober and after a while find friends 
which complements the family, community and everything that goes on around. So fellowship has provided me with a bridge back to modern life or just a bridge back to living and being a part of family if it's possible and when possible and all that we can do. So how did AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, who I don't speak for, do this? Well, simply, they invite, it, they invite anybody who has a desire to stop drinking to join in. No rules, no breaking of anything, just a simple invitation. If you have a desire to stop drinking, join. And on this little card here is the AA preamble, which I share in every video, because I think it's important that we know what we're about. And it's very easy if we go to uh, anything on a repetitive basis that we forget why we're going there and we can get disturbed and distracted by anything. So we ask people to turn their telephones off but they don't, they just put them on silent and play games sometimes. But that's what they do, it's nothing, nothing to do with me. Anyway, Alcoholics Anonymous, what is it? Here we go, Statement of Intent and the AA pre Preamble. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sept, denomination, politics, organisation or institution, does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And easily done, one would think. But why do we go back every day? Because every day we forget what is good for us. And uh, this month, April, Daily Reflections, part of the literature covers the 12 steps of action to change attitude and behaviour. And April is all about step four, the fearless moral inventory. Some may feel that that is a onerous task. It's not actually. It tells us who we were and who we are becoming, helping us understand our feelings, our spiritual connection to living, which is living in the now reality, and what we may do with today. So for April 9th, it talks about freedom from king alcohol. Let us not suppose even for an instance, instant that we are under constraint. Our former tyrant, King Alcohol, always stands ready again to clutch us at him or to him. Therefore freedom from alcohol is the great must that has to be achieved else we go mad or die, or go back to the insanity of drinking over and over again and the madness of it. When drinking, I lived in spiritual, emotional and sometimes physical, discom physical confinement. I constructed my prison with bars of self-will and self-indulgence from which I could not escape. Occasional dry spells that seemed to promise freedom would turn out to be little more than hopes of a reprieve. True escape required a willingness to follow whatever right actions were needed to turn the lock. With that willingness and action, both lock and the bars themselves opened for me. Continued willingness and action keep me free in a kind of extended daily probation that never need end. And even though it's endless, we have to work at it because it's so easy to uh, get into a negative state of mind. It's so easy to find ourselves wondering what is going on and why is it always me who seems to get, get it? Or why does the world let me down? Or am I letting myself down in my desire to fix the feelings rather than face them and work through what is going on around me, my true reality of now helped by the wisdom of others, which is what fellowship is all about. And uh, William Lovelace wrote uh, ma many things, and one of the things he wrote was this, stone walls do not a prison make, nor are iron bars a cage, minds innocent and quiet take that for a hermitage. If I have freedom, if I have freedom in my love, and in my soul am free, angels alone that soar above enjoy such liberty. And, you know, for me, liberty is freedom to experience all that is going on, all of my, all of my emotions, from fear to joy, all of them, which is why I put a note up about 
feelings on Facebook. If I know my feelings, how am I feeling, why, what can I do, I have a better opportunity to do something about it. And if it involves other people, which it often does, it's about behaviour, my attitude and behaviour, and their attitude and behaviour. So I divorce, if you like, love, loving people, from attitude and behaviour. I can love a person and not be sure about their behaviour, and that I can talk about with them or myself. So we learn a little bit more each day. How am I feeling? Why? What can I do? And when it's all going up and down, the serenity prayer to good conscience, or God, or both, as you choose, it's a personal choice on a higher power. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today. Don in London, hello. It's April 9th, two, 2009. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. And I'm in recovery one day at a time. Uh, my addictive substan substance was alcohol. My behaviour, workaholic, drinkaholic, gymaholic, relationshipaholic, any ism you could possibly imagine connected to going to the extremes of doing my utmost and my best simply because I often felt less than or fearful that I wouldn't measure up to some standard that I imagined you had of me and my own standard and I remember um, when working a very eminent person who asked my opinion on several matters to do with grief or just asked for help um, they said how on earth do you forgive yourself when you don't succeed and I never really considered what he was saying now how do I forgive? How do I forgive myself and other people? And at the time I was astonished by that question, but simply I've had to learn to forgive me being human, because I am human, and uh, just making one day work as I may. So what helps me most at, the, at this time is the fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, and I emphasize yet again, I don't speak for it, I speak about my recovery and how the fellowship helps me on a daily basis just make this simple one day less complicated and more straightforward. And in, in the process of doing that I share the AA preamble and I talk about literature which can help focus me on this one day. So I always wake up and say to myself, how am I feeling, why, what can I do? And this morning I felt a bit disturbed, uh, not quite sure if I'm on the right track or not and that's a good thing I'm feeling uncertain and I don't know not bent out of shape particularly but open and willing and honest to take on board other people's ideas so I need to do that it means I then become included rather than excluded being a part of something rather than nothing and keeping my eye on how I'm doing during any particular day to do with recovery Without recovery there is nothing for me, a return back to uh, old times of isolation, exclusion and not understanding anything. So it's really important to me that I keep a focus on recovery and then the rest of my life can work out just as it may for anyone and everyone. So the preamble of AA, uh, meetings I go to most days, goes like this and it says Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So the gift really is simply, if we are sober one day at a time and we do some uh, work on that, being open, honest and willing and use, utilize the 12 step action program that AA provides, we have a better chance of making life work or living life, living the experience and understanding a little bit more about where we are with everything. And uh, I use, I've been utilising two books in the main, As Bill Sees It, that's Bill Wilson, co-founder, 
well known within the fellowship but not necessarily known to anybody outside the fellowship and uh, daily reflections which is uh, the d a compilation of one day readings from people in the program over many many years and I just want to really start with it as Bill sees it because it's quite important and it, it's about two-way tolerance and this is on page 73 and it just happens to be the linear progression through this particular book at this time it says two-way tolerance your point of view was once mine fortunately AA is constructed so that we need not debate the existence of God but for best results most of us depend upon a higher power you say the group is your higher power and no right-minded AA would challenge your privilege to believe precisely that way we should all be glad that good recoveries can be made even on this limited basis so that's Bill Wilson speaking as somebody who has a very strong understanding of the God of their understanding but turnaround is fair play. If you would expect tolerance from your, for your point of view, I'm sure you would be willing to reciprocate. I try to remember that. Down through the centuries, lots of brighter people than I have, have been found on both sides of this debate about belief. For myself, of late years, I'm finding it much easier to believe that God made man than man made God. Yeah, and you know, God made man, man made God. It's a circular debate, but the other thing is there what Bill Wilson was saying is we need to respect each other and our points of view and uh, I've been in correspondence with a, a one person um, about whether or not it's okay to do these videos with me on them and the, the, the absolute, absolute truth is if you just saw a silhouette of a, of a person unless you're in AA and understand why that silhouette is there the anonymity bit you probably won't watch them and you might be an alcoholic who's completely drunk watching YouTube then suddenly this character who looks very ordinary and is just a normal person comes up and says you know AA saved my life because it did on a daily basis and the gift is we only stay sober one day and if misfortune happens to me and I have a slip or a relapse I can say cheerfully I need to go back to AA straight away and promptly admit it and get back on the wagon if I didn't do that I would stay away and probably die now that doesn't make me special and different what it means is I'm just being pragmatic and I am very certain that anonymity has its place to find sanctuary you know a sanctuary where we can find our truth and anonymity remains a personal it is a personal de decision and a choice so when I do these videos I'm not looking to in for engrandisement I'm just saying you know I'm an ordinary person making a video about recovery and why the 12 steps work for me and this month is all about step 4 which is a fearless moral inventory and part of that fearless moral inventory is about finding open honest and willing ways of communication to let people know where I am today and where they are today so it's about assertiveness and empathy assets and liabilities and making life work or experiencing life as we work at it yes maybe that's the better way of describing it experiencing life as we work it <coughs> and in the uh, daily reflections today it says I'll get the right page page but yes sorry April 9th freedom from king alcohol let us not suppose that even for an instant that we are not under constraint our former tyrant king alcohol always stands ready to gain a clutch again to clutch it to him therefore freedom from alcohol is the great must that has to be achieved else we go mad or die or and die in my opinion when drinking I lived in spiritual emotional and sometimes physical confinement I had constructed my prison with bars of self-will and self-indulgence from which I could not escape occasional dry spells that seemed to promise freedom would turn out to be little more than hopes of a reprieve true escape required a willingness to follow whatever right actions were needed to turn, turn the lock with that willingness and action both the lock and the bars themselves opened for me continued willingness and action to keep me free in a kind of, it, of extended daily probation that need not, never end or in other words sober one day at a time and uh, you know life is difficult enough and I had a phone call this morning about you know, what is the honest thing to do with payment of this particular particular bill in a particular way 
and I, has, I have to hesitate and think to myself, well, you know, there are two ways of doing this, a cash in hand basis and another way of doing it, which is to actually own up to the full amount. And it made me challenge myself, you know, honestly, how can I suggest something to another person when it's about their mm -hmm. openness and honesty? So, in the end, it turned out that the, the only way was to do it honestly. And that's where I got to. And uh, there's a lot of noises off, so it may be that I have to do this again. Meanwhile, what keeps me on the straight and narrow, open, honest and willing, is the programme of AA. Mm -hmm. Understanding that I'm making just progress and not perfect that anonymity will always be a sore subject for many people and that uh, letting people know what AA can do can either be good or it can backfire because if I did relapse, what on earth would people think? And the answer is I'm just a human being trying to be sober one day at a time. So when I say God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change like noises off, courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference, it really, really is just for one day and I am open to be persuaded otherwise to how I live my life, but then I must make my choices. John in London, good morning, and it's uh, Wednesday, 8 o'clock, April the 9th, 2008, my brother's official 50th birthday. And uh, this is not about him, it's about AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, and here's the preamble. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirements for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. LA, AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. Yes, and uh, I don't speak for AA, I speak for myself, but AA did play a big part in saving my life these last few years. And. Uh, one of the good things about recovery is you get to live longer. One of the slightly unfortunate aspects of getting to live longer is we can get other things wrong with us because we are not protected like any, anybody else. We are ordinary and we're susceptible to any human condition which is, which is about. And uh, I got caught out yesterday. Beautiful morning, I decided to go out and uh, take some photos in the centre of town. And uh, whilst my feet complain bitterly about going and walk, walking or walk about. Sometimes I do it just because. And uh, I'm trying to get my blood sugars under control with the uh, diabetes situation, type 1, uh, ins insulin dependent and injecting. And uh, it's been too high for some time, so I'm trying to keep it down. And uh, in the process of trying to keep it down, do exercise, get the diet right, um, do th this, that and the other. Sometimes I, I get caught out and in Trafalgar Square I had what is known as a hypo and my blood sugar went really w way down below 4 I suspect because when I got home it was only 5.1 and I was still shaking because of the experience and it's not, not very pleasant actually and uh, if you're in the, in the, in the centre of town with a bunch of people around and you start to shake and go pale they may wonder what is wrong with you but fortunately I did have some sugar on board in my bag, glucose tablet, so I was able to uh, st stabilise it enough. But it's always a nasty shock, and it takes a bit of time to get over. So it sort of discombobulated me a little bit yesterday. However, I still got to my evening meeting at Kensington Shire and I have to say it was one of the best AA meetings I've been to in ages. Simply because we we try to be honest in our fellowship, and one of the things about honesty is. We need to be feeling really, really safe to divulge our innermost being. Where our innermost being is, is the truth of us often, which is scared about what people might think of us. But when we overcome the fear and get to this place of courage, faith and confidence, then we find that we can tell the truth about ourselves and our story and what is going on. And we had a, an excellent share from the chairperson who has been... I guess through the mill from a very early age and has found sobriety for several years 
and their story revealed much about the stories of everybody in the room and many people connected on a very simple level of honesty honesty from the inside out rather than trying to be honest or trying to be this thinking elaborately was not the nature of the evening and what people were doing and that's really bringing on me to this book which I've started reading and I haven't got past page, maybe page 3 or 4 now in the text The Power of Now Practicing The Power of Now and one of the things the, the person who did the share said which um, I know because it, it, I connected immediately and I think everybody knows we can think the program and uh, get it in our intellectual understanding of how to do the 12 steps of AA and live life in a, in a better way but actually putting them into practice and as this book suggests it's the practice of, of the power of now practicing the power of now and uh, as it says here in just a very short paragraph or two and I've got to change my specs again because guess what as I had a, a hypo yesterday morning uh, what did I do? I overcompensated so it's taking a little time to come down and I'm getting this elusive up and down business which is not so good anyway as it says in this book as you listen to the thought you feel a conscious presence your deeper self behind or underneath that thought as it were the thought then loses its power over you and quickly subsides because you are no longer energizing the mind through identification with it this is the beginning of the end of involuntary and compulsive thinking when a thought subsides you, you experience a discontinuity discontinu in, the, in the mental stream a gap of no mind at first the gaps will be short, a few seconds perhaps, but, gra but gradually they will become longer. When these gaps occur, you feel a certain stillness and peace, of peace inside you, which is when your mind isn't racing. This is the beginning, the beginning of your natural state of felt oneness with being, being ourself, which is usually obscured by the mind. With practice, the sense of stillness and pe peace will deepen. In fact, there is no end to its depth. You will find you, you you will also feel a subtle emanation of joy arising from the deep within, the joy of being, and I think that is so important because behind all this aspiring and striving, the, the actual simplicity is not doing anything. It's letting go of those thoughts of striving and trying to prove, which actually get us to a place of uh, inner inner peace and oneness. Anyway, coming on to the daily readings and reflections. Daily reflections, April all about step four, and uh, each month covered covers one step, 12 steps, 12 months. So April 9th, freedom from king alcohol. Let us not suppose even for an instant that we are not under a constraint. Our former tyrant, king alcohol, always stands ready to gain, again, ready again to clutch us to him. Therefore, freedom from alcohol is the great must that has to be achieved else we go mad or die and that's uh, going back to step one so I just need a quick sip step one being powers over alcohol and life being unmanageable when drinking I lived in spiritual, emotional and sometimes physical confinement I had constructed my prison with bars of self-will thinking and self-indulgence from which I could not escape Occasional dry spells that seemed to promise freedom would turn out to be little more than hopes of a reprieve because we're still, we're still uh, in that mindset of thinking we can go overcome something. Only occasional dry spells, yes. True, yes, true escape required a willingness to follow whatever right actions were needed to turn the lock. Noises off. That's one of my neighbours going past on his Harley. With that willingness and action, both the lock and the bars themselves open to me. Continu continued willingness and action keep me free in a kind of extended daily privation that will never end. Well, I, it's you see, sobriety obviously is contingent on not having a drink. And contingent, contingent upon peacefulness is being one with oneself. So we're all on the same track. As Bill sees it, and this thing about elaborate thinking, you know, we all, the, the intellectual can come out in any of those, our thinking powers, and we think we know it all. In fact, we, we know less than we ever think we know, because we never uh, get past our, our striving, if, if, you, if you like. Anyway, coming on to the night, as Bill sees it. Persistence in prayer. We often tend to 
to slight serious meditation and prayer as something not really necessary. To be sure, we feel it is something that help, might help us to meet an occasional emergency, but at first many of us are apt to regard it as somewhat mysterious, um, a somewhat mysterious skill of clergymen from which we may hope to get a second-hand benefit. In AA, we have found that the actual good results of prayer are beyond questions. They are mat matters of knowledge and experience. All those who have persisted have found strength not ordinarily their own. They have found wisdom beyond their usual capacity, and they have increased, increasingly found a peace of mind which can stand firm in the face of difficult circumstances. And in many respects, what that means is, if we find our ability to not just think about ourselves, but think about the bigger picture, to be one with our surroundings, and be, find that oneness inside us, then we are not, I suppose, obsessed by being right or wrong. We are more in line with being. And uh, although this has been a bit of a discompopulated video, I hope it made some sense to somebody out there. The truth is out there, and in us, if only we can find it.